Okay, so understanding triggers is very important because if we don't understand this, if we don't understand the the triggers that that might impact our indigenous communities, um, we could end up re like causing more harm, uh, even when we think we're doing good. So we may like believe that, oh yes, this is definitely helping those communities, but uh, we may not know for sure, and it may inadvertently trigger someone. Um, so what is a like a trigger? So if you understand our memories, um, it's this is really this is something that is very interesting about our our memories is that they because of the way that they're stored, like anything can kind of cause a trigger. Um, I remember. <laughs> going to be like a really weird story to share but I, I was in I think Sylvan Lake or something and I was walking by it was a hot day I was just walking by this garbage can um, and there was like a smell from that garbage can and then immediately like a memory came up I didn't you know think about this but I think it was a memory of a time when I was in um, Hong Kong and I was like walking in the streets and it was it, like it had a similar type of smell and so like a smell could become a trigger. A word could become a trigger. A like a type of action could become a trigger. And so, how do you know um, what they would like to see? What what would be a trigger, and what might cause this? Like, it's very hard to know uh, these kinds of things. But understanding some of the stories and understanding some of the the actions that happened during these times can be very very helpful. Um, so for example, um, I already mentioned that the Truth and Reconciliation uh, Commission of Canada uh, is a 535 page report uh, that's in the public domain. Of course, it includes historical um, images, of course, from Archives Canada. Uh, and this report already is a like strong source for hearing the Indigenous uh, voices today. But, and, and here's a big but, it's, it's not enough, right? Like just having that alone isn't enough to, oh, okay, um, I know, <laughs> like I, I will know how to understand, I will understand all of the, the triggers. But I think that it's a starting point. It doesn't hurt um, to have that. And so some of the stories included uh, the way that they were separated or segregated. So I could see actions that lead to uh, that type of segregation being very traumatic or triggering trauma for anybody who's been through that experience. Um, I could see the connection, right? The, like the separation between the school and the, uh, the parents as another type of trigger where they feel like disconnected from their own children. They're not as involved. That can be a big part of it. Language is mentioned in the calls to action. Uh, their language is very important to them because that was something that was taken away. So being able to have options in their language is very important to them. Having everything in one language is um, can be very traumatic and be very reminiscent of what they experienced. Um, other ones included understanding that I think it was the communication. So communications where the um, indigenous communities, like uh, what they were going to write, every letter uh, that they were going to write was uh, reviewed vetted, you know, scripted um, by like the authorities at the time. Um, that can be very traumatic as well because like this is a reminiscent, like it's replaying. It, like it, it, all it is is just replaying acts that had happened before. You know, we may just see it as well, this is common practice, you know, like, um, you know, vetting your, your, your public relations. Um, yes, right, it is. But from their perspective, they may see it differently. And so I like, I don't know for sure. And that's one of the reasons why indigenous uh, voice and choice is very important when it comes to any types of discussions about you know, what you might do for those communities. No, no doing anything for the communities without having them at the decision making table. Um, and I think that that is something that will be very helpful as a, as a double check, just to make sure that we're on the right page. And so I hope that makes sense. You know, this is something that is very important to me. Um, I think that if it is the case, 
and, and this happened like recently, like the school name of the Bishop, Bishop Brandon High School uh, was a trigger. The name itself became a trigger, like a memory trigger for many indigen in the indigenous communities. And so, of course, there was a call to to change the name of the school. And I, I think that that was very appropriate to make a change uh, to the name of the school because it is it is very much traumatic. And that's like the whole goal here is to to support healing. And so in that case, I feel like, yeah, this is causing trauma. You know, what are the like, this is the thing that is if is it if this is the thing that is like opening the wound and preventing healing, I think taking it very seriously um, is important. And this is not the only one. There are other ways that this happens on a daily basis that we don't even think about. And so what has helped in this? And, and how does that relate back to the, the trauma training, the trauma lens? Well, this is interesting because people say the same things about trauma. So, for example, simply take a look at people who have gone through extremely traumatic events. Um, and it is in these, like, I watched a bunch of uh, videos of uh, individuals who had gone through very traumatic um, events and how certain things really, like, it really triggered them. Like, for example, um, somebody who had gone through, like, the loss of family because of a, a big flood, he was describing how he, he got very little, like, next to no sympathy um, from his, his boss, um, like the kind of like, get over it, like what's wrong with you kind of thing. And I think those types of things really, it really made things worse for him. And he describes the experience of how it felt to go through that. Ah, oh, yes. Oh, Alice is here. Uh, Alice says, communication is key and discussion and consensus is important. Discussion and consensus are important. Yes. So uh, to this point, uh, Alice, it is in those discussions that you start to get the, the subtleties of the why. And I think that people, if they don't understand the why, then the act has no meaning. If somebody told you to wear a particular color shirt, but you are not clear as to why you are wearing this, like why like orange uh, to talk about residential schools, right? Like, if you are not clear on why that is the case, then we have a problem, then the point of this activity has been missed. Uh, and it is more important for it to be genuine. And it, it comes from that communication, having those discussions, share the experiences, right, what those people went through, you will have like much more empathy for the individual when you you hear their stories. And that's what I love about the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. If anything, I wish that instead of having it all written as a really big report, like a 500 page report, I wish they, like if there were more videos of what people had gone through, like people just clip those and we could show those in classrooms. That would be a powerful reminder of what that experience was like from their perspective. Um, and we did the same. We did the same when we learned about trauma. Uh, grief following trauma, critical incident stress management. It was hearing stories of real people who have gone through extremely traumatic events and they describe how other people reacted to them. People avoided me because they didn't want to talk to me because I was like this weird broken person. Oh, okay. So understanding like, oh, this is, this is, this is really important. So I love that. You know, you, you also mentioned that the discussion, the consensus component is very important. That's the big factor that I see is that in, in, this, in this case, especially when it comes to reconciliation and trauma, it was like what was traumatic was the loss of choice, the loss of freedom. And so I can see any types of decisions that are made without that type of discussion, consensus, agreement as being traumatic. 
they made a decision and I wasn't involved. I can see that being extremely traumatic because it's like they, they made tons of decisions and I wasn't involved. And so understanding that as a trigger, like to me, that is very powerful because once you have this perspective on, oh, it is these triggers, it is these things that we're, we're doing, we don't even, maybe don't even notice that is preventing healing, then you can start working towards, well, what would help? And sometimes it's not like, oh, I come in and, you know, I got to solve all the, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> right? Like healing is a personal process. And, and they need, like, all, all you can do is create the environment that is conducive to healing. You can create the, the systems, the environments that support healing. It is up to the other individual whether or not they accept any help. It is their choice. Right. Some people may choose not to. Some people will will reach out. That is not up to you. <laughs> it's not up to us to, to make that decision. However, I, I do think that it is having that kind of environment that we have checked the systems. We know for certain that these are not causing more trauma. We are consulting on them on many of our key decisions that we, we think maybe don't necessarily involve them. It doesn't matter. We still want them involved. Like, I think that having an indigenous person on the board, like on the, the board of trustees, where all the decisions are making, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt, right? Having somebody who is the representative at every uh, board decision meeting that's not a bad idea, right? Like you, you, you do want to have that perspective there because like it's very hard for the board alone if they, they don't have like a, a person on there making uh, some advice. It, it's very hard to make good decisions that are helpful for that community. So I hope that that helps um, provide a little bit of my perspective on it. Um, I'm following the advice of uh, Antoinette Cooper um, from the Parenting Decolonized Conference. Um, I was really influenced by, like, it, some of you have watched the movie The Hate You Give. Um, to me, it it kind of reminded me a lot of, like, what the experience was um, of what people had to go through um, and who they identified as and, and what all this was. Um, and so at the end of all of this, it, it just reminded me how trauma is really there and how sometimes like the hate you give the whole message behind it was if you haven't watched the movie I hope I don't spoil it for you is that we're we're transferring a lot of that hate onto our own kids not realizing it we're just reacting to the world in a very normal way but we don't realize that it's actually triggering the, um it's triggering a new type of hate and that's the kind of hate that just it creates a society full of hate Right, because we we get we we're, we grow up in it. Um, let's see. So I've got another uh, from Alice saying the opportunity to choose to be involved or not to be involved is also important. Yeah. Voice and choice. So when it comes to being able to choose to be involved, they can say like, "We want to have nothing to do with this." Totally cool, right? Or we don't want that help. Right, this is this is good. This is good news. Um, to me, this is like this is really a key. Is that who's driving? Who's driving reconciliation? If we're driving it, I feel like mm, that could be a mistake because it's very easy to move down in in a direction very quickly and realize, oh, this wasn't helpful at all. If they're driving it. Well, that's different. And I, I think that's why people start off with the truth and reconciliation uh, calls to action. Those are made by the indigenous communities. So we can say like, that's where it's being driven from. Now, in terms of the implementation, that's not easy either. So we can then go, okay, we also, you know, help them. We, we also went back to the, those communities and we said, well, this is what we see from the truth and reconciliation com um, commission. We were thinking like this might be a good venue. Is this in the right direction? Are we are we moving in the right direction? 
Is this something that you would like to be involved with? Is this something, and that's a good indicator too. Think about it, right? Like somebody saying, yeah, that's good. And I want to help. I, I want to be a part of it. Like that is great validation that you are moving in the right direction. That is great validation that you are making a positive impact. And so that's what we want. We want them so interested in what we're doing that they want to be involved. They choose to volunteer. Um, you can imagine something where you're doing that and like, parents choose to volunteer, like you do some parent activity and you're like, that's so cool. How can I get involved with that? You're moving in the right direction, right? If people are willing to volunteer their time, 